up and get a little accommodation here. I, I saw this before, you know. And that was a day of work, wasn't it? It was a day of witnessing what they had done and to get myself ready for thanking the people that were responsible for telling my story. Just that little part of my life, but such a big part of my life. And tonight wasn't that. Tonight was tough. Tonight was tough because she was here. She was with me. And I know she's saying, toughen up. <laughs> you know, I'll turn you loose now, but <laughs> believe me, miracles happened to me after 1989 that are just unexplainable, <laughs> except that there is a God in heaven and that that God is up there now praising a certain lady that's there with him. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I, I want to talk about origin stories. They fascinate me. Um, and I would love to know, um, first of all, uh, Sally, um, I'd love to know the origin story of the queen's love of horses. Did she ever tell you a particular animal that just took her heart and captured her, a pony. Well, I think she had her first pony when she was very, very young. And it was just imbued in her uh, love of horses. Her mother wasn't much of a rider. Her father was a rider. And um, he hunted and um, played a little polo. But, but it was just, um, she had as Monty sort of alluded to, she had a sort of psychological connection with horses and obviously with dogs. Um, and she, um, like Monty, could, could read them, could relate to them. She was gentle. Um, I remember one of her other trainers who, um, who Monty knows, Ian Balding, who came slowly, if I'm not even sure completely, to your techniques. <laughs> But he did tell me about one time when she was visiting him, and there was a um, they were in a in a in a paddock with a lot of colts, and they suddenly started bucking and running around, and it was quite terrifying. And the queen and uh, um, Ian just stood there, and the colts calmed down. And I remember you told me that she would quiet herself just as you do when you're, and maybe it's through breathing, but um, it, when, when she was in a situation of stress, and I think this went, getting back to your origin question, I think it just went back to her youth when she just felt so comfortable. And, you know, particularly during World War II, whenever they had a break, as you showed in the movie, she would get with her horses. And you know, I imagine the life of uh, such a famed uh, royal person who has uh, so many obligations, I imagine it's uh, in some ways expansive but also confining. Did you ever express about the freedom that horses give you, that joining another, that, that the power they lend? Well, I wish I could tell you I had an extensive interview with her, but I didn't. <laughs> she didn't give interviews, but I did talk to many people who knew her well, people in her family, friends. And, um, you know, I think Monty probably could speak to that better than I could because he actually had many, um, you know, conversations with her about those kinds of things. I had so many conversations with her and you, you'd be interested in, in an even broader picture where she became the closest friend you could imagine. But this lady was the only person, I think, on the face of the earth that was allowed to do her life in a book. Isn't well, other people had written them, but I think they gave me, I remember when I first saw you, and I can't exactly find it, remember precisely how it was connected to you, but I walked into your house at Flag is Up Farms, and you said, 
Well, I've been talking to Buckingham Palace, and they've given me some flashing green lights. Yeah. So I knew that I was going to be able to spend the day there and to really see what you did and to see what it was that influenced. Well, um, Pat, Pat and I recently hired a lady um, to just plow through every sentence of that book with me and make notes and stuff. And, you know, you read a lot of stories about someone like Queen Elizabeth and they get sort of altered and switched around a little bit to make them more exciting or something. And boy, you wrote it the way it was. Well, and thank you very I much. I so congratulate you on every, was... every, every word of it is just uh, tremendous. And this audience, nor any audience on the face of the earth, still doesn't know all there is to know about Owen. And Owen's uh, coming to Her Majesty um, and saying that he thought horses shouldn't have violence. And then pushing her that way, he was, te he was her first teacher yeah. of rider yeah. riding, and she was only four or five years old yeah. when the family got upset because he was they were trying, he was trying to make her nonviolent and horses have to have somebody that makes them know their boss, you know? They mm. fired him, and he is yeah. gone. And when she came to me at that round pen, on the first horse I did, I didn't know what she was saying. I couldn't, uh, and she was saying, Owen was right, you know. Mm -hmm. Owen was right. And I didn't know what it meant until I went through my entire time with her. And what it meant was she had a guilty conscience about causing Owen to be dismissed. Mm -hmm. And she wanted me to help her get over that, and I, I think I did but it was very private. Um, I want to talk, uh, my second origin story question is for the filmmakers here. And a, a round of applause for the filmmakers. It's extraordinary. Um, you know, how, how, how did you find this, this story? How did you pull this thread for, for both of you? Um, <clears throat> uh, I was working on another story about the queen and her corgis, or uh, was trying to, and all the people who had worked with the queen and her corgis had passed away. And there was one person who I knew who at least had some knowledge of this relationship, and that was a guy who lived two hours away like from me. a little me. closer. Sorry, yes, and I'm also a horse. Um, who would live two hours away from me, and it was the middle of COVID, and nobody was sort of allowed to go out. And I thought, if I don't go and meet this gentleman and uh, bring a camera, I might never get to do it. And so I went up and I interviewed him. And I was thinking I was going to talk to him about corgis. And he began to tell me the story about his life. And I went home that night and I wrote it all down. And I said to myself, if I don't make this film, I'll be disappointed forever. <laughs> and that was the beginning. And then uh, I continued to shoot slowly because I didn't have funding, it was COVID, it was really difficult to get anybody to go out and, uh, and sort of be together. And uh, Graham, who I had worked with many times, was there as our sound person and got a huge compliment from Monty, who's done many, many <laughs> films in the past and said he was the best who ever worked with him. <laughs> and, uh, and at the end of the fourth, third or fourth shoot, Graham turned to me and said, I really see this now. I see the arc of the story. And I said, you want to do it? And we sat down and we started editing together, long distance, and that's what we have here. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it really came together. It, the story is so incredible that it was probably the most fun to edit of any project that I've ever done. And it, felt, it feels like it came together in a matter of like three months, and then it was just figuring out how exactly we were going to get the queen and your life in there together. And, it, and even that was easy once we started. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Someday, long after I'm gone, all the miracles that happened after I met the Queen will be known. And it's one after another, after another. Not from her. It was to us. From God in heaven, there is no doubt about it. Miracle after miracle. And these people have pulled it together. And I, I, I just hope I can last long enough 
to watch the citizens of the United States become aware of what she meant to the whole world. Monty, one of the really extraordinary moments in the film for me was that audio, sort of a hot mic capture of the Queen saying, wait, wait, it works on people too. And that has become really the, the core of your work with horses and humans now. And I, I want to compliment uh, and thank the, the whole crew here for including, we have um, a number of first responders and veterans from Gallup NYC, which is New York City's therapeutic riding stables, and the instructors who teach therapeutic horsemanship using Monty's <laughs> principles. Uh, if you put your hands up, Gallup NYC here. So, um, Monty, can you talk about how you've pivoted or evolved this practice into healing humans and, and that aha moment for you. Yeah, it, a Sister Agnes Patricia. She started in on me at the age of nine. Pat was in the classroom next to me and we're now married for 68 years almost. <laughs> yeah. And, and she witnessed what my father was and she asked me to get away from him, to please not blame him for anything, that's the way he wants to be, let him be that way, but get an education and go through that education to learn behavioral sciences. And I have two doctorates in behavioral sciences because I believe in doing what I'm told and, and it's just been fantastic. Um, the miracles that have come to me because of realizing what we should do next and how we should regard people in our lives. And um, the Queen and I talked about it many times, but that full circle came to be when I got my doctorates and then met the Queen and then the plane got me there, 23 horses and all of them just said, they saluted and said, we'll be good will be perfect, and they were all perfect. But the horses have Monty, been they're perfect. always perfect with you. I've seen you at work. I, yes, it's true. Monty, I, would, I just want to mention one more thing that you told me that I, that I had in the book and, and really thought a lot about, which is that here was the queen who had been raised in a certain way um, to deal with horses in a certain way, and as you say, it went against her essential grain. But... What you witnessed was somebody who had been accustomed to this, but whose mind was wide open, and that you actually felt her opening her mind. Yeah. She was, in fact, a very open-minded, very inquisitive, very receptive kind of person, um, and a good listener. Yeah, and th this, this lady wrote this book, and... I thought when it came out, I didn't read it until recently. <laughs> That's all right. It's only a decade. But I'll give you <laughs> other, other people I, read it. It's a bestseller. Don't worry, guys. When, it, when it came that. out, I knew that it was done by the Queen's recommendation for the author and about her life. And so what does that have to do with me, I thought. I'm still a cowboy. What does it have to do with me? I won't be mentioned in that. 27 times my name came out in her book when I finally got it. It's unbelievable. Um, and there's a chapter in there about, I think, Shy Boy or something. I, don't, I can't remember now, but I, I, I feel so blessed by everything that has happened here. And my life has been made by the acceptance of Her Majesty's decision to take me in and believe what I say, and to go back and say no was right. And, uh, oh. Owen, I, 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 I called him the wrong name several times, and you have to, I'm 88 now, and you have to uh, excuse me for uh, shifting we, we around. We excuse you, it, don't Owen worry. Owen was <laughs> right. We love you, Monty, we excuse you yeah. for everything. Thank um, you. I have um, a, a question for Pat, um, and this is something that's really important to Monty, I know, and I, I want your thoughts on it too. Um, Monty's lasting legacy, what do you see uh, your husband's legacy being? And, and you've watched it unfold since the third grade. <laughs> <laughs> I have. It's been an, an amazing journey. Uh, I've seen it. everything that he's aimed for in life has 
unfurled itself and in the last 10 years has really come to fruition. And uh, we have a, a daughter, Debbie, and uh, she is a absolute legacy maker. And she's doing everything that she can. Please, Debbie, yeah, stand, stand up. up. <laughs> Monty, Monty's got a, a wonderful message, and he's had a wonderful vehicle to, uh, to take it out to the world through horses. And he's a great horseman, but he's also great at speaking and at, at conversing with people to make them believe. And uh, so I guess that's his legacy, and we but, have a daughter uh, that's but, helping but, us. But please let me tell you that um, these mar miracles, uh, she had Sir John Miller as her equerry. He's in charge of all of her horses. And she said, I want you to go to California and find this guy that they wrote these articles about. And uh, he said, I don't know where he is or who he is, Monty Roberts, I never heard of him. And she said, well, don't you have a friend in California? He said, yes, I have a friend there that lives in California. And he uh, used to be in pony races with me or something. And... Uh, she said, we'll give him a call and see if he knows where Monty Roberts lives. This is before Google. <laughs> before Google, yeah. They, 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 uh, they, uh, Sir John Miller called John Bowles, and John Bowles says, Monty Roberts, I live six miles from him. I've known him since 1950. He's a genius with horses. That's what he said, anyway. And Pat and I thought it was a joke that the queen wanted to come and see us. And they brought this little guy that said, the queen wants you to come to, to Windsor Castle. And I said, it's a joke, Pat, don't believe it. And then we received the, 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 the written uh, invitation. I, um, miracles after miracle after miracle. You can't believe it. And I think you took your cowboy hat off so many times in front of her. She said, you don't have to take your cowboy hat off every time you speak to me, Monty. You I, can. I was there. I was there at the side, and Princess Margaret was there. And Princess Margaret was full of questions, and the queen is coming back and forth, back and forth. And I know that each time... The queen comes up and you talk to her, you take your hat off. So I think it was, what, about three times or four times that she came over with Princess Margaret's questions and I took my hat off like this. And she said, Monty, not all men have to take off their hats when they're speaking with the queen. <laughs> what? I didn't know that. I was told you're supposed to take your hat off, so I took my hat off. She said, no, you see these fellows around here that protect me all the time? They don't take their hat off when they're talking to me. Okay, w what does that mean? They're wearing a uniform. <laughs> and when you're wearing a uniform, you don't take your hat off for any reason. I said, yes, but, and she said, I dubbed this your uniform. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Um, uh, so, so I have it I, on. I'm going to ask my final question because I've been given the bat signal. Um, and I have to correct something. I'm a journalist, I'm a reporter for the New York Times, a very into facts. There is one factual inaccuracy in this at the very end. Don't everybody breathe, it's a joke, don't worry. Um, <laughs> uh, we had a fact checker for yeah, the yeah, New no, York Times. No, no, it's just lead up to a joke. Shh. Um, so um, you said maybe you're pushing on 20%. Uh, of, of changing the uh, impulse and the way that we uh, tame horses from breaking them to gentling, and you think you went to 20%. I think this room attests that you're at 90, and this is your legacy, Monty. And I wanted to ask you something um, about the world, right? You, you have expanded from horses to humans, and I want you to go even bigger. How do we take your principles of nonviolence into this very violent moment that we're living in? Um, and how do we keep uh, pushing that 90% to 91, 2, 3, 4? I just keep doing the best I can. And at 88, the best you can is all you can do. And uh, so we just got back from Brazil. And Brazil, eight years ago, I was down there and I did a show. And they had their way and my way at this big thing is about a thousand people there or something 
And they did their way and my way. And I was showing them that this is a better way. And I got home to Solvang, California, and the phone rang, and a lady said, I own the biggest newspaper in Brazil, and if you ever come back to this country, I have a standing um, uh, arrest demand for you in any city that you come to in Brazil. I said, well, I'm not going back to Brazil. <laughs> okay, so recently, a Brazilian student of mine came to me and he said, I want you to come back to Brazil. I said, I can't, can't go back to Brazil. They're going to arrest me. He said, you can't believe how things have changed in Brazil since you were there. The largest audience I had in my entire career was in Cologne, Cologne Germany, 7,000 people. And that was wonderful. Oh, that's the biggest audience for any trainer of horses that that's they like have. a taylor swift audience what that's a, that's a pop star audience monty that's yeah seven thousand and um he said you are not going to get arrested i want you to come back there thirty two thousand people came to my last demonstration there it's unbelievable monty, how many how many push-ups did you do at the demonstration did you do your push-ups I did 88 push-ups at 88 years, and I, didn't, I don't know how I did that, but I got it done. And Pat said the guy counted too slow and that I actually did over about a... 100. <laughs> I, I actually did over 100. And I was doing 105 twice a day, two days a week uh, before I went down there. And, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to stay in shape. I'm trying to stay alive for uh, the things that she wants me to do. And believe me, she's still talking to me. There's still work to do. There's a lot of work to do. And, and uh, you know, when you look at some of these countries where they're still using a lot of violence, not only to horses, but to their neighbors. And I want to change the world as much as I can. So, can I, can so I just can pay tribute to the film because that is going to be an important way that your legacy is going to be spread. And Thank it's you, so Sally. brilliant. And I love the fact that you got all this footage that nobody had ever seen before. That moment by the pen when the queen is smiling and she goes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I heard about it, but you show it in a really, really vivid, wonderful, compelling way. So you're, this is what I'll leave you with. Um, it's, the film does not have distribution yet. And I think if it can get distribution and be seen around the world, everybody needs this message. Our world needs it so badly right now to be curious, to listen to others, to breathe deeply, and to, to really solve things by seeing each other, no matter how far in our languages are. So if you can, if everybody can vote for this, for the audience award, if we can get the audience award, the distributors will take notice. And so it's kind of, I mean, this is for Monty and Monty's legacy, not just my own self-aggrandizement. I really believe in this movie and I really want people to see it. Uh, thank you so much for all of your time. A standing ovation for Monty and this team, please. I think they deserve it again. Thank you all very much. It means so much to me. And I know to her too. Thank you.